Hello, everybody. Welcome to Talk About House. I'm Todd. I'm Juana. Okay, today we're going to talk about national home prices, the trend, mm -hmm. and this article that came out. Just came out. Home prices reach new high in January, Case Schiller says. Okay, you can see it's updated at March 26th of 2024. That's right now. Juana, what does new high mean? Is it just mean new high for ever? Or just like last couple of years? <laughs> well, generally speaking, by most of our understanding, it means all time high. It does not mean new high for the week or for the month, unless it's specifically qualified by something else. New high means all time high. Okay, it is an all time high. And the reason why we're talking about this is because, you know, we get a lot of crash bros who come into the channel. And we love the crash bros. We appreciate you watching and subscribing. So if you're one of them, go ahead and hit the notification bell, subscribe, and keep watching. And share with your other crash bro friends and That's make fun right. of us. So you should watch these guys. They have no idea what they're talking about. But because somebody basically came in and saw our market update, mm -hmm. where home prices were up 6.1% in Vegas over the last 12 months. And they said, oh, that's great because the rest of the nation's down 20%. From December of 2022. And we're like, what? So I, I was like, let me go see what they're... And I, so I finally figured out they found a specific chart that was literally an average, which, okay, so let's talk about three things. You have indexed prices, which are the most accurate. Mm -hmm. You have median home prices, which are the next most, okay, or the second least. And then you have... Average. Okay, Juana, you had an agent that just took a $35 million listing. Mm -hmm. That one listing is going to skew the average home sale in Las Vegas substantially. One one thing when it sells. Sure. Why is that $35 million listing going to skew the average? Well, because now it's going to move things, right? So. You, you take that $35 million listing with maybe a $3 million listing and you combine them together. Now that's 38 divided by two, you know, that's 19. So does that mean that the average price in Vegas is 19 million? No. And when you, so average, you got to be careful. The other thing you have to be careful of with using average and median, even uh, when there's low volume, because remember, we've been through this before. Most of what you've seen in home price declines have actually been more homes selling in the lower range of the market mm -hmm. because a lot of the top of the market was taken out because of l lending. Mm -hmm. but so more people were doing purchases in the lower end of the market. So the median was looking smaller. But when you go by the indexed, they're higher. So here's the first quote from the article. In other news, it's only getting worse for prospective home buyers. New data from the S&P CoreLogic Case Shiller, U.S. National Home Buyer Index, revealed that home prices rose by 6% year over year in January. Mm -hmm. Okay, That's the highest annual increase since 2022. Doesn't mean it's the first time it's increased, just the highest increase. They've actually increased every year since 2012, right? Yeah. 2012. 12 years straight. Every year they've increased year over year. The price said all cities, all, define all. It's an inclusive term, right? How do you say all in Romanian? Um, think of it as total. Total. Right. So okay. it's, a, it's a word that it, it's similar to that. It's like total. Okay. Mm -hmm. Total. All of them. Saw year over year increase for the second consecutive month and prices continue to set new all time highs. So I went, this is a chart from the article. This is the largest 20 markets in the U.S. by size. And then they have this composite called the Composite 20, which is where they get their thing. Um, which is weird because it says, okay, no, they all rose in every one. Portland, 0.3%. <laughs> so it was, it's like the little train that could. It got that 0.3% somehow. Uh, San Diego, 8.8%. Is that crazy? With median home prices went up like 80,000. Mm -hmm. in the last year. But as you look through this chart, home prices in every of the 20 largest markets, went up. there is no way t home prices could have gone down 20% in the last, since the fourth quarter of 2020. It's not possible. No. Like, I don't know where people are getting this data. I, I think I know the chart that he was talking about. And I looked at what the, maybe they were trying to do, but it was an average. And then it was 
they cherry picked high to low, like a like a spring to a fall kind of a thing. Right. Okay. So look, I mean, you can get data to say anything you want. We don't manipulate data. We just present it and have a conversation about it. Okay. So we've got a bunch more data we're going to talk about. So then I went and said, okay, Redfin. Redfin is typically about the bearish. Now, Redfin recently stopped using medians because they were missing the market and people were complaining. And they actually switched to uh, their own index mm -hmm. okay, of a chart of it. Before I show you that, this is February 2024, US, US United States housing market. This is all. This is another word that we go with all. Okay. We're not talking about Canada. We're not talking about Vegas. We're talking about the whole country. Okay. Median sale price was 6.6%. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, year over year. Mm -hmm. So that's plus in green, which means up. So there's no way it's down 20%, okay. right? Uh, 334,000 homes were sold and more uh, newly listed homes uh, came on the market. Okay. So here is the chart I'm going to show you. This is the Redfin uh, HPI. The Case Schiller index is not on here, but it's basically almost exactly the same. That red line, it says Redfin home price index month over month. Nationwide, home prices rose 0.7% month over month in October to a record high. Monthly price growth is now on par with pre-pandemic levels following a pandemic roller coaster ride that sent price growth soaring and then tumbling. Price growth, not prices. I think that's what they're talking about is price growth. Uh, on a year-over-year -year basis, prices climbed 6% in October, the largest annual increase since the start of 2023. So if home prices went up 25% one year and then the next year they only went up 5%, people are saying home prices are down 20%. Because every year they go up 25%, but if they only go up 5%, they're down, right? Well, they, look at this chart. There's nowhere on this chart it goes down. This chart goes all the way back to 2012. It says on the top there, April 1st, 2012. That is pretty darn steady state home price appreciation. And you could keenly see the three phases of it. The first was out of the housing crash mm -hmm. up to the pandemic. Okay. Looked like pretty steady price appreciation. Then we had the post pandemic thing, which they skyrocketed. And then interest rates rapidly rising and they still are going up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Juana, what... This tape, I mean, how long have interest rates been over 6% now? Uh, a couple of years now. Yeah, definitely over a year and a half. Yeah. Um, this though, like that, pretty much that whole last part is with 6 7% interest rates. Home prices are going up. Mm -hmm. Why isn't it? We were told home prices would drop 40, 50%, and this chart clearly doesn't show that. Mm -hmm. So what's, what's happening here? Why, are, why would home prices go up? when interest rates are higher. Shouldn't prices be half as much? Because that's what they said, half as much because, you know, person's got to, it's all, house is only worth the monthly payment. So a couple things. Um, the interest rate has little to no effect on home prices for a lot of reasons. First of all, because the interest rate is the cost of borrowing money, but that's not, that really doesn't bear a relationship to the cost of the house because if the cost of borrowing money bore relationship on prices for goods and services, then would the price of a car be half? Would the price of your clothing at the store be half? How about your groceries? Are those half? Of course not. So the cost of money is a different, completely different item than the, the cost of goods and services. And then as far as real estate is concerned, we're dealing with supply and demand, right? We have more demand than we have supply. We have insufficient homes. We are building homes that are not keeping up with demand. So every year we are actually falling farther behind on the number of homes desired versus those built and available. So until we reach uh, an equilibrium there, you're going to see supply and demand play a substantial role in home values. Now, are we going to get to a point where uh, that evens out? That's very possible. Is it in the next couple of years? That's not possible. And that's very, it's very seldom that I actually say that something isn't possible, but that is not possible. It's simply not possible because when you take a look at our population, when you take a look at the number of households, and when you take a look at building permits, supply of materials, available land, and everything that goes with it, and you consider all of that 
in aggregate, you realize that there is not a physical way possible for the amount of supply to even out the amount of demand. Not in, not in the short term. In the long term, sure, it's possible. But in the short term, that's not physically possible. And we say short term, we're talking five to 10 years. You know, I'm actually talking more like five to seven years. Okay, five to seven years. I think 10 years is a much longer horizon. And I think that's, that is a possibility depending on policy and depending on uh, economics, the availability of labor, mm -hmm. technology, because technology plays, plays a role in this as well. Okay. You know, our ability to put up houses. Uh, I think all of that plays, plays a role. So the more we have advancements in other areas and maybe people entering the trades, that would be helpful. Okay. I also went and checked this Fred chart. This is households, not mm -hmm. banks, checkable deposits and currency. This is cash. This is cash and checkable deposits. This is money that can be spent. And if you look at this number, that 3948 is not billions because the units, it says they're mil the units are in millions of dollars, which means you have to add million. You have to put a comma and then six zeros after that number. We have four trillion with a T dollars of cash in our bank accounts, mm -hmm. all of us combined. Okay. Now, just because you don't have it doesn't mean aggregately everybody else doesn't have it. What's interesting is we look at this chart historically. Americans didn't keep that much. Um, they kept about half a trillion all the way up to just past the great financial crisis. And then they kept about a trillion. But then when the thing happened, God did not be careful because YouTube will punish us if we say it, the thing. You already said it earlier. I know I said it. But <laughs> look what happened there in just a couple of years. The amount of checkable deposits, Juana, mm -hmm. crushed the four trillion markets, it's, it's hanging right there at four trillion right now. Mm -hmm. Four trillion bucks of cash, buying a lot of houses, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. That's one of the reasons why interest rates have been largely yawners for people, right? Well, they have because you know we're talking about a lot of people purchasing cash now in the Vegas market. That's almost thirty percent every month. It's right. been hanging around, you know, twenty nine and change percent every month, and then particularly. Uh, when you're dealing in the in the low end and in the high end, those tend to be cash transactions. It's the people in the middle that, that tend to need financing. Uh, Switzerland just became the first country nationally to start dropping their federal funds rate, their interest mm -hmm. rate. Okay. The Fed, at the last Fed meeting, they said, hey, we're going to hold them still, but we expect we'll do three reductions of some amount throughout the year, potentially. So... You know, this 6.74, which is the current rate right now, we could see low sixes by the end of the year. Not unrealistic, right? Right. And that's, you know, as far as the, the, the general rate. But, you know, the rate that you get at the bank versus the guy next to you are going to be completely different. So you might go and you might get uh, six and a quarter, even though, you know, the guy next to you might get uh, six and seven eighths. So it's dependent on a lot of things. It's dependent on your credit, on your debt to income ratio, on how much money you're putting down, on the relationship with the uh, financial institution. It's dependent on a lot of things. Right. Uh, here's another one that I heard were the foreclosures that would stop home price growth. This is a, another Fred chart, delinquency rate on single family residential mortgages, booked in domestic offices, all commercial banks. This is all loans. That's what that means. It's all loans. Okay. It's not, when it says, Offices, it doesn't mean office loans because it says single family residential mortgages. Okay. The, if you list charts, pretty self explanatory. The percentage of delinquencies is literally the lowest it's ever been. It might have been a little lower back in the early 2000s, but it's pretty darn low. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then I heard about the foreclosures. So I went and pulled the latest Adam, uh, Adam data on foreclosures. Foreclosure numbers decrease annually in 28 states. One is 28 more or less than half the states? More. More. I got an A plus on doing math in public. Someone's going to now say more foreclosures because I heard the word foreclosure and more, right? <laughs> Lenders repossessed, ready for this, 3,397 U.S. properties in February, okay? That's the whole nation, right? Mm -hmm. Which is literally, we had that in a week in Vegas, okay, in 2008. 
down 14%, down 14% from last month, and 11% from a year ago. So down both of those. Juana, is down more or less? Less. Okay. So people are obviously, I don't know where they're getting their data. I think this is just crash bro propaganda that they have to keep putting out because, you know, they have this rabid, rabid fan base of people that are just, you know. They are dedicated fans. And then I said, well, what about Vegas? Because everyone complains about Vegas. I pulled the city of Las Vegas. These are the latest foreclosure numbers. If you go look back, this goes back to 2014. If you look at the last effectively five months and you see those little bitty, you can almost not see those lines. They just go down every, every month, the number of foreclosures. It's almost, they're not going up, they're going down. When the bar is smaller, that's less, okay? Then what I did is actually went in and pulled the actual Vegas numbers. Now we did a, our last foreclosure update we did in the fall and we had in the trailing 12 months, we had 150 foreclosures in the whole city of Vegas for the entire trailing 12 months, right? Well, in the last 12 months, it's 115. So what that means is that six of those months were counted in the 150 already. So we actually have less foreclosures in Vegas because if you, as you look back 12 months, you're seeing less foreclosures. And then when you go over here to the foreclosure cell city of Las Vegas, look at January 24, that's the latest month. There were 10. Now we have 400,000 houses in Vegas, mm -hmm. okay? And if you have 115 a year, that's less than one every three days, mm -hmm. okay? One every three days. So that means on Monday, if you drove your car around Las Vegas, what were your chances of seeing a foreclosure? If you drove by all 400,000 houses? Very tiny. It was zero because there were none that day. And then Tuesday, it was zero, but there was one on Wednesday. But you would have to drive all 400 houses to finally find the foreclosure. Like this idea that there's foreclosures. Remember, everyone's got cash. Want to explain to them why we're not seeing and will never probably likely see as many foreclosures as we had before. So a lot of reasons. First of all, banks learned from the last time around that fore foreclosing on properties is unpopular and it's not profitable. So they learned that. They also learned that foreclosing on properties cannibalizes the rest of their loans, so that was bad. And then probably the number one reason besides banks learning uh, from previous experience is that there are a lot more investors now that are picking up properties way before they ever make it to that foreclosure stage. So they're, they're purchasing properties from the distressed seller and they're making good on the loan, whether they're bringing the loan current or extinguishing the loan, whatever is happening with that. So there are lots of ways to, to deal with that. Now that was a process that existed before the financial crisis, right? Uh, this used to happen all the time. We used to find people who were, uh, who, for whatever reason, could not wait to sell their home on the open market and an investor would come in and pay them some amount of money to walk away from the house and the investor would bring the loan current, would fix up the house and sell it or rent it out, whatever that, that they would choose to do. And so th this was part of the process before. What sent the whole thing tumbling was a, whole, a perfect storm of other things where investors simply couldn't keep up with that. There were more homes on the market than investors could absorb. Now we're not in that situation because current homeowners have uh, monthly mortgage payments that are generally lower than having to rent. Say that again. And why is that? So current homeowners have generally lower mo monthly payments than they could pay in rent for the same house because they have these wonderful 3% give or take loans out there. So if you're, um, so let me give you an example. If you were to I have a house right now that maybe it's worth four hundred thousand, and four hundred thousand today. Uh, but you refinanced it, you know, two three years ago, and you got this great three percent loan. And you know, at the time, the house was worth maybe two seventy. And so now you've got this great three percent loan on three uh, on two seventy. Well, what's your mortgage payment at that? Eleven hundred bucks. Right. So now to rent that $400,000 house would cost you about between $2,000 to $2,200, right? 
So why would you pay twice as much to rent your house? Not only that, but by owning the house, you get the tax benefits. So you get to, most people get to deduct, deduct their property taxes, their interest payment. So effectively reducing their taxable income. So think of it as uh, the government subsidizing your home ownership. So all those things actually, so the effective cost of your house at that point. So if your payment is $1,100 a month, then maybe the effective cost of your house is let's say, you know, 750. Okay. So now what can you get for 750? Well, I've got a newsflash for you. You can't get anything in Vegas for 750. So that gives you an idea of the reason why people are simply not going to just get their homes foreclosed. Uh, that's, that's probably the number one reason. Another reason is of course, because half the homes in Vegas are owned free and clear nationally. The number I think is 42%. So that gives you another reason. And then the other half of the people that do have loans generally have a lot of equity, uh, probably another third, oh, less than, than half on the house. So there's a lot of equity out there. So, you know, you're dealing in, the, in a situation where there's a lot of equity in, in homes throughout the nation. And then Todd's point that there's a lot of cash in the bank. So between a lot of cash in the bank and a lot of equity, that puts people in a pretty good position. So investors have money to purchase homes that might otherwise not, uh, not be sellable on the market for whatever reason. So they don't end up getting foreclosed. Foreclosures tend to be uh, unusual events. So and I've talked about this before. So foreclosures tend to be things like title problems, um, death without heirs, things like that tend to lead to foreclosures more often than, oh, I can't make my mortgage payment. In Nevada, a foreclosure takes about three years. So in three years, that's a long time to sell the house, get caught up, make some other arrangement, you know, whatever. They just put says just, when you can start making the payment, make it, we're just going to put all the, what you owe on the back and we'll get it when you sell it. Right. So all kinds of things that can be worked out. So that's the reason why, you know, we're talking this way about what's going on in the marketplace, about the lack of foreclosures and why we don't see a lot of foreclosures in, uh, on the horizon. Will there be for, more foreclosures in the future? Maybe, but right now with the current environment, that's unlikely. Okay. What does this mean for home prices? We, we're probably past the worst of interest rates for mortgages. Probably. Probably. All other things being equal. Fifty. If I if I was good. If if I gave you a fifty fifty bet two years from now, higher or lower, mm -hmm. cash dollars, mm -hmm. ten grand, mm. and you had to say, and we're gonna we're gonna snapshot today. I think it was six point seven four. Freddie Mac thirty year fixed average, six point seven four percent. Two years from today, I think it's more than that or less. Less. What if I said 6.24%, we're going to take half, 50, 50 basis points, fifth, half percent off. And I'm going to make you guess on that. Which would you guess? I would still guess lower. Okay. I, I would guess, I would guess the same. We have structurally nothing in place that would cause home prices struck. You can't fight the structure and the economics of what's happening right now. Wages are growing at all time highs. Mm -hmm. Las Vegas has the highest job growth in the nation. Highest. We're number one in the nation for job growth. Town right. is booming. We're getting 60 to 70,000 people. We have 5,000 people a month just from LA County. Right. So the thing is though, interest rates are not local. They are national. Yeah. So we're, we're kind of conflating things. There. No, no. I'm, I'm just saying that, you know, these interest rates, if you thought interest rates was crash housing market didn't happen. So, you know, whatever, propaganda you've been saying is wrong. It's, it's fake data. And you can just look and see what these, like Case Schiller isn't just some bro who's got like living in his parents' basement, making up shit and putting on YouTube, right? Go, going, oh, subscribe to my channel. And I made, what if these guys are making like 400,000 a year, some of the top ones, right? And some of them are making seven figures, but okay. Yeah, it's crazy. So uh, anyway, the, the reason why we're pointing this out is because I guarantee you there are people that didn't buy a house in 2019 because they mm -hmm. saw Crash Pro video. And now they're like, oh, well, now I can't buy because they're stuck on the 2019 price and 2019 interest rate. And all they see is a higher price and a higher interest rate. Right. Well, and that's, that's unfortunate for them. I know. Anyway, yep. that was it for the slides. All right. Cool beans. Um, colorful slides. I like colorful slides. 
Thank you for the slides, Mr. Miller. Yes. Worked oh. all, I spent all day working on the slides. Right. But if you believe that, I've got a bridge to sell you. So, yeah. <laughs> hope you like the video. Please remember to like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share the video, leave us your real estate related comments. If there are crash bros out there that you are enamored with, please feel free to, you know, tell us what um, information. See, I'm using a nice word. <laughs> it's an interesting <laughs> choice of words. Uh, what information they're um, sharing. I think I'm trying to be very nice. What information That's pretty nice. I got to remember. Sharing? There are days I have to. I wake up and have to remember that I am not in the Marine Corps any, anymore. Especially when we had the big office with all like the people who are much younger. This and mostly mm -hmm. female working in there. Mm -hmm. So okay. Yeah. So anyway, please leave us your real estate related comments. We appreciate them. Like the video. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Share the video. And we'll see you on the next video. Bye. Bye.